So this video is going to be about biogeochemical cycles. So a biogeochemical cycle is going to be any of the various chemical cycles that involve both biotic and abiotic components of an ecosystem. And so these cycles can be either on a global scale or a local scale. And some examples of biogeochemical cycles would be the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and the water cycle. And there are several others, um, but these are uh, really important ones. So now I'm going to explain the water cycle and the carbon cycle uh, and just give an overview of the two. The water cycle you're probably pretty familiar with, um, but we'll start with evaporation. And as uh, the water evaporates, it's going to condense into clouds and then move over um, the land by wind. And then eventually you're going to have precipitation over the land and then percolation through the soil, which means it just uh, seeps down through the different layers of the soil. And then again, you can have evaporation from the land, and then you can also have runoff and groundwater that's going to flow back towards the ocean, where you can also have precipitation, um, and then the cycle just repeats itself. And so this is going to involve both the biotic and the abiotic components of an ecosystem, because obviously water is needed by organisms, is going to be taken up by those organisms, so they'll be involved in the biotic components of this cycle. And then things such as clouds and the ocean and the water itself will be the abiotic um, components of that uh, ecosystem. So moving on to the carbon cycle, it's a little more complicated. So we're going to have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that's going to then be taken up by plants and converted into organic carbon compounds through photosynthesis. And then we'll have consumers that will eat those plants and then pass, bring the carbon from the plants into um, a, uh, a consumer. And then the consumer will pass on that carbon either to another consumer or uh, pass it on back to the environment through um, uh, excretion. And so once that carbon gets back into the environment, uh, you can have decomposition. Uh, and so the consumers will break it down and release carbon back into the, uh, into the environment that way. You can also have carbon being released in the form of carbon dioxide through cellular respiration in both plants and animals. Uh, we can also have carbon dioxide being released through the burning of things like fossil fuels and woods. Um, and then all of that carbon dioxide goes back into the atmosphere where it's then available to be taken up for photosynthesis again by plants or phytoplankton and then go through that entire cycle once again. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.